With erythropoietin, poietin means to make, and erythro refers to red blood cells. So erythropoietin is a hormone that stimulates the production of erythrocytes, or red blood cells, in the bone marrow. Erythropoietin, also known as EPO, is produced in the kidneys, and to a lesser extent in the liver, and travels through the blood to the bone marrow where it stimulates immature cells to transform into mature red blood cells. Now, every cell in the body uses oxygen for cellular respiration. As we breathe, oxygen diffuses into the bloodstream where it binds hemoglobin within the red blood cells and gets carried off to various parts of the body. Red blood cells live for about 120 days, so there's a constant need to produce new red blood cells. Now, in the bone marrow, there are proerythroblasts, which are primitive or immature red blood cells. The kidneys produce a constant level of erythropoietin, which gets released into the blood and makes its way to the bone marrow, where it binds to erythropoietin receptors on the immature red blood cells and causes them to mature into erythrocytes, or red blood cells. And usually this production of erythropoietin is constant, so the production of mature red blood cells is also constant. If there's ever a decreased oxygen delivery to the tissues, though, in this situation the kidney cells ramp up production of erythropoietin, therefore ramping up production of mature red blood cells. Interestingly, erythropoietin acts by preventing immature red blood cells from killing themselves via apoptosis, meaning that without erythropoietin, developing red blood cells die. Fundamentally, decreased oxygen delivery to the tissues can be due to a decrease in blood flow or a decrease in blood oxygen content. If there's a decrease in blood flow, then increasing the number of red blood cells actually isn't that effective. But if there's a decreased oxygen content in the blood, then increasing the number of red blood cells is effective and it'll help with oxygen delivery. What's neat about this is that the kidneys can distinguish between these two scenarios. A decrease in blood flow means that the kidneys are less perfused, and it leads to less fluid getting filtered in the glomeruli. Less fluid filtered means less solutes need to be reabsorbed and saved from being urinated out by the tubular cells, which is a process that requires energy from oxygen. But in this case, since there's less solutes to reabsorb, the demand for oxygen by those tubular cells is relatively low. So even though with low blood flow the oxygen supply decreases, the oxygen demand also decreases, which means that those cells still have enough oxygen, and so as a result they don't make erythropoietin. On the other hand, with decreased oxygen content, there's still a low oxygen supply, but in this case there's adequate blood flow, which means more fluid gets filtered in the glomeruli, and more solutes need to be reabsorbed, which means the tubular cells now need more energy and oxygen. In this case, they now have a higher demand for oxygen, but again, they have a low supply of oxygen. And so now we have a state of oxygen starvation, and this stimulates production of erythropoietin. Under normal conditions, the kidney cells produce a tiny promoter called hypoxia-inducible factor 1, or HIF1 which is made up of an alpha and beta subunit. In the presence of oxygen, the enzyme hif prolyl hydroxylase adds an OH group, which is also called hydroxylation, to the proline residues on the alpha subunit of HIF1. As soon as these proline residues are hydroxylated, they then get tagged with ubiquitin molecules, or ubiquitinated, which mark it for destruction within the organelle known as a proteasome. And this is kind of like the cellular wood chipper, grinding that protein into little fragments. So when there's an adequate level of oxygen within the kidney cells, the alpha subunits of HIF1 are constantly being destroyed in the proteasomes. When the kidney cells are starved though and there's an absence of oxygen, HIF1 doesn't get hydroxylated and ubiquitinated, and as a result it sticks around. HIF1 then goes into the nucleus of the cells and acts as a promoter to increase the synthesis of erythropoietin mRNA. In other words, as the demand for oxygen exceeds the supply of oxygen to the kidney cells, they start producing more erythropoietin. Now, all the cells in the kidney are capable of producing erythropoietin. Individuals with chronic kidney disease who have a loss of kidney mass 
therefore have low erythropoietin levels and often develop anemia as a result. The opposite situation happens when exogenous erythropoietin is used, which leads to high erythropoietin and high red blood cell production. Unfortunately, this is often used as an enhancement agent by athletes who want extra red blood cells to help them in sports like long-distance running and cycling. Alright, as a quick recap. Erythropoietin is a hormone produced by the kidneys that helps in maturation of red blood cells in the bone marrow. When there's decreased oxygen delivery to the tissues, the kidneys increase erythropoietin production, which ends up increasing red blood cell production. Helping current and future clinicians focus, learn, retain, and thrive. Learn more.